What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Post Ambition. In this episode, we're going to talk about something, or I'm going to answer a question that many people have asked me for the past couple of years for the YouTube channel. And that question is, what's a good water wheel combination to start inshore fishing with? Inshore light tackle more specifically, throwing laws that like I do, like the cars, usually twitch, spoons. Like what water wheel would I recommend with someone to start with? Well, there are a lot of options and to show you some of the options the first thing we're going to do i'm going to take you on a trip to what i think is the best tackle shop in Trinidad. i recommend anyone to go there monkey's tackle shop i'm going to give you a quick rundown on the kind of options available and what you should be looking for in an inshore rod and reel or a light tackle or artificial laws some light bait some small bait some light bait that kind of setup they're going to be using so after we come back from my monkeys i'm going to show you what i currently use and just give you some last minute advice on what you should get for yourself. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so one of the questions that a lot of people keep on asking over and over again is what rod and reel setup to get to start inshore fishing. Now here at Manky Tackle Shop, there's a wide variety of rods, reels, which I'll show you, I'll find out the place after. But I want to specifically focus on what you should get as a starting fisherman for inshore fishing. Inshore fishing means like tackle artificials, and maybe some light tackle, maybe beach fishing with um, Maracas Jetty sort of thing like that but more focusing on the artificials like the snook, tap on, maybe carries, caranga planes, carangas, inshore fish in general. Two th key things to remember with fishing inshore, with artificials you need to cast a lot, you need to get as much distance as possible. So my recommendation for starting is to get a, either 3000 size or 4000 size reef. That's what I started off with. Uh, as you get more into the fishing, I'll give you some advice on how to change stuff. But 3,000 or 4,000 size reel is the ideal way to start. Now, in front of me, uh, if you come into monkeys, I have a couple of recommendations for you. As a starter, beginner, one of the first reels you could probably get if you've never fished in show before, maybe on a budget, is the Pen Pursuit 3. Now, at the store, you have the 2,500, the 3,000, and the 4,000. If you've never fished artificials before, I still stay go with the 3 to the 4,000 size. 3,000, probably ideal. Um, because of one, it's a little bit easier to handle. So this is the 3,000 size pen pursuit. I said if you're just starting off with something I'd recommend. Just taking a quick look at the specs and I'll tell you why you should recommend. Um, braid and mono, next thing we'll talk about afterwards. But the capacity for braid. Efficient inshore, your max line setting for line rating. For braid, I think 15 pong, 20 pong max. For mono, 10 pong, recommended 15 pong max. Again, you need to put as much line and reel as possible to get the maximum cast distance. For the pen, pursuit 3, uh, 3000. Braid, 15 pong test, 250 yards. And well, that's a lot of line. So I think that should be more enough for any inshore application. Um, like I said, the weight of it is also important because we do a lot of casting and 3,000, 4,000 is the maximum weight you, I think you could use to cast for extended periods of time. So this is the pen pursuit tree. I mean as a starter, if you're going higher up, there's a pen bottle. Now I love a pen bottle. I've had one in 8,000 size for a long time. It's a quality reel. Again, in the 3,000 and 4,000 size, this will be more expensive than the pen pursuit tree. And in between there's the pen pairs tree which you can get the 3000 or 4000 size as well so this is it i think like a lower end but you don't want to go too low end because your your reel is important it is more important for me than the rod and that's my opinion take a look at the pen button tree size 3000 this is a very nice reel check it out is that a nice reel what then this is a new pen battle tree. Because the pen battle two is the one I have. So this one is a new one on the market. 3000, it feels very light. I think this is like my real. Next week, like I've got to get one, might be one of these. Looking at the real rating, 10 pong mono, 165 yards. That's more than adequate for inch fishing. Both the braid, 15 pong, again 250 yards. And those are the kinds you're looking for. Not to get spool all that line on the reel, but to get maximum casting distance. The more line on the reel, the further it will go. So this, I think, is a great option if you want to go a higher end starting off. Pen Battle 3, 3000 or 4000. 
Another reel that he normally has, which he doesn't have in store right now, which me and Snook Master both have, which I'll be able to see in my the Daiwa BG. I have a 4,000 Snook Master, that's a 3,000. We have caught a lot of fish on it. And one thing I have to tell you is those reels stand up to the test. Now, after the reels, I'm going to show you what rod to use if you're starting to inshore fishing. Alright, so now we have the reels covered, you need a rod. Now, fishing inshore again, like tackle artificials. What I recommend is a 6 foot 6, 7 foot rod. I say medium action, medium heavy, but medium action aside. The length of the rod is important, again, casting distance. But you don't want a big, cumbersome rod which is too heavy to cast. Even if it's bigger and longer, yes, it might be better for surf casting, but when you have to cast artificials over and over, 7 foot rod, ideal. Now, in store by Mr. Man, he has a number of rods, as you can see. My rod that I'm using right now, but is this one right here i'll go to that after but as a startup you don't want to spend too much money now trying it out this shimano stimula is a great startup rod snook master i believe has one of these um the price for this rod you cannot go wrong this one is a six foot six medium heavy when you look at the rod for intro you look at the line rating so if you line this is a six foot six rod and for line weight is for mono 10 to 15 pounds if you're going grade 15 to 30 pounds like i just mentioned before if you're fishing inshore mono should be 15 pound max ideally 10 pound and for braid i'd say 20 pound max some people go to 30 but 15 is what i recommend and this rod is rated perfectly for that again the shimano stimula is a great buy it is the price and the quality you cannot go wrong there's a few options this is the six foot six and also he has a seven foot right here he has a one piece and a two piece to choose a one piece or two piece is all about the convenience of carrying the rod a two piece is great fits in your trunk or you can maybe if you're going to bagel you can make a tube and carry it the one piece is the stronger rod but carrying it sometimes can be a pain since we switched to one piece rods so master has dug up the top of my car so much time to do for the car but it gives you a little more strength a little more backbone in the one piece i love the one piece but but convenience and transport to peace is the better way just like that look how easy it is right and in terms of rod as well you could go to the higher end like stimuli is great but if you want to spend a little bit more this rod right here is what i am using now this is the tsunami carbon shield 2 it's a great rod actually i really love it i have a seven foot um i think i have the medium heavy this is the medium so again you look at the line rating 8 to 15 pound mono, 10 to 20 pound braid. Exactly what you're looking for. And this rod is very strong, very flexible, and very light. And you can cast it forever. Alright, guys, so that's the most important thing your rod and reel combo. 3,000, 4,000 size reel, and a 7 foot, 6 foot, 6 medium, medium heavy rod if you want to go a little stronger. Can't ask for not anything better than that. That's the perfect inch or startup. Line rating wise, mono. My favorite mono is this right here, Berkeley Big Game Trilene. I love this mono. This is 10 pound test. Perfect for your inshore setting. Any color you choose, um, I like it clear. This is also a great color. But 10 pound test mono, I'd say max for inshore fishing. If you want to be all safer, 12 pound test big 8, 15 pound test maximum. For braid, J braid, I love it. Just have to use it, no complaints. Very good braid. And he wants some anchors up 10, 15, and 20 pound test. If you want to be a little safer, go to 20 pound test. For maximum casting distance, 10 pound test. As a beginner, I recommend 15 pound test. Gives you extra strength and also you can cast just as far. And 15 pound test, 330 yards. Most of the reels we looked at do more than full the capacity. So just to go over it one more time, really quickly. Real size, 3,000, 4,000 size. Rod 7 foot, 6 foot 6 medium, line rating 10 to 15 pound mono, braid, I recommend 15, you can go as high as 30. And as your P6 setup to start inshore fishing with artificials. You have that, you can't go wrong. And as a startup, go economical, see if you're getting your hang of it first, and then you can gradually increase. Like I always tell everybody, get the best you could afford. You gotta go out there with a thousand dollar or fifteen dollar reel on reel. I mean eventually you'll get there. My most expensive combo is probably uh, to me Daiwa BG um, and 
this rod this is the most my most expensive combo and i only got that after a few years i started off with a shimano spyrex in the early videos with a, a blue rod cheap combo did the job but as you get better and better you can start to improve your gear and your quality and also you can spend a little bit more also as you get more experience you can go down in real size for a little more game or a little more fight 2500 size reels are now pretty good i have one um, you can also go 1000 size if you want to do really light and short tackle and get some real fight from the little tap one and a little snook and thing. It makes the shit more fun. But as a beginner, I would not recommend it. If you're now starting off, you need a little more security and you get to get the hang of it. Right guys, so any questions you can comment below. Glad to help you out. This is just the first video like this. I mean this is the intro setup. I'll do another one for maybe deep chopping, deep banking another time. But like I like I see, if you want to get a run wheel combo, you want to come to Mr. Markey's shop, come. He has the reels available, the 3,000, 4,000 size, and the rods. You don't have to spend a ton. Get something to start up with and start throwing loads. You can't catch fish if you're lying down in the water. Okay, guys, so you saw that trip to Markey's me and your master took a lot of options available to suit anyone's budget. And that's the first thing I want to recommend buy the best that you could afford. It doesn't have to have to be the most expensive. Get the best they could afford. Like the Shimano, the Millers, um, the Pen Pursuit 3, 3000 size. Those are economical buys. I started off the channel using, this was the only reel I had, Shimano Spyrex 4000. And a blue Bass Pro Graphite Series 7 foot rod. That's all I had when I started the channel. If you go back to the earlier videos, the blue rod and this reel, I caught almost everything with it. The reel's still going. I mean, it's got a couple dunks in the sand and water, which, you know, it's not 100% effective, but it still works pretty good. Uh, the dragon thing needs some work, but it's not the most expensive. It did the job for a long time. Since then, I've actually gotten a couple different reels. Um, I graduated, so to speak. I've up my gear. I spent a lot more money. And then I bought this guy here, not too long ago. It's the Daiwa BG. 4,000 size. I'm on this road right now because I can't remember last time I used it. Maybe going on my Mahi. But yeah, 4,000 size Daiwa BG. This reel is the best reel I've ever owned. Cost a little bit more than the previous reels I had, but if I had to recommend one reel, it's Daiwa BG. Value for money. I have the 4,000 size, the master has the 3,000 size. I'd actually recommend the 3,000 size for what you're sticking the intro applications. 4,000 gives you a little more beef. Got my big snook in Tobago with this. A um, lot of fish with this called Mahi Mahi. This reel is great. And if you could afford it, get that. 4000 size. But again, I kept on upping the game. And now I can show you my new combo that I use. Another Daiwa. This one is a Daiwa Fuego LT. 2500 size. So you see the 4000 size going down to 2500 size. As you get more and more into the fishing, you can go down in your real size. You get a little more fight, a little more action, a little more game, you go down real size. This is full of 10 pound braid and it is on my new favorite rod, which is Tsunami Carbon Shield 2. So this is a 7 foot medium heavy, um, super light rod, you can cast this forever and with this reel, even better. So I've actually upped the game, you can see I spent a little more on the rod, a little more on the reel, but you don't have to start off like that. Buy what you can afford and keep on going up and up and up. That is my best with the BG and, and that, that rod is the most I've ever spent. There are a lot of better reels out there. I mean, well, a lot more technical, a lot more expensive. And if I could afford it, I recommend you get it. Get the best you could afford. It's a sport you love doing and the better gear you have, the better, the more you enjoy it. A couple of the higher end reels I recommend. Shimano Stratic is always a good reel. Same sizes, 3000, 4000, 2500. Uh, they have a new Shimano, I think it's the Van, Van Ford. Van. Van Ford. I don't even know what I think Brett has in the last video. Check that one too. Then in the Daiwa range, the Daiwa has the Ballistic LT. If you're going for any Daiwa reel in the high end range, get that Ballistic LT. It is a great reel. That is the next reel I want to get. Right now it's around 220 USD for it. So it's a lot of money, but eventually you can get to there and graduate today. So um, that's the next reel I'll be going for. In terms of rods, there's a lot of high end rods out there. Um, even Bass Pro Shops have a lot of bass rods spinning rods i think the johnny morris series is a good series high quality rods very light and you can just explore the options rods are limitless you can check anything abu garcia shimano check around and like i said get the best you can afford 
and make use of it. Have one of this and a course them in shore kit and you can go fishing anywhere in Trinidad. Beaches, Maracas, uh, Las Cuevas, Karna, Chagaramas, Go River Fishing for Tapo and Snook, um, Cavalli. If you even do wolf fishing with these things, it's a nice all round and real setup. So if you want to go to one tackle shop in Trinidad, I highly recommend you check out Monkeys. Best prices, best service, and you can get a wide variety of stuff. 3,000, 4,000 size, no he'll be getting back some Daiwa BGs, he has some Shamanos to bring in. So check him out when you're ready, and I guarantee you'll get some good service and some great products. Great size, so a lot in the video. Any other questions you may have on intro like tackle application rods, reels, line, laws, anything, comment below, I'll be happy to try to answer it. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Coastal Fishing. Till the next one, keep fishing, fish on.